Hey everybody, uh, Boing.music here, and I'm going to be showing y'all how to play a jaw harp. Um, so first things first, you want to consider what kind of jaw harp you're getting. Um, you're not going to be able to play very adequately with a Snoopy harp or something similar. This is a Snoopy harp here. They break down really quickly, they're really cheaply made, and there's pretty big gap between the reed and the frame there, so it makes it really hard to produce a sound. Right? No one can really, you know, uh, do a lot with that. Um, I recommend looking for a potkin, um, which you can find on the harpery.com or on Instagram through World Harps um, are some good places to look, um, or even at some local shops um, will often carry um, harps like these, um, and they produce a pretty nice sound for a pretty cheap price. So yeah, um, personally, I recommend Glazerin harps uh, for beginners because they're generally pretty cheap, around $30. My first harp was actually a Glazerin Frigate, um, and they're, they've got really good sound quality, and you're able to, you know, have them for a while because they're pretty durable. So once you have your harp, um, how do you play it? So what you're going to do here is you're going to, well, I guess we should go over the terminology. This right here, the brass part, is the frame. Um, and then what you see here running in between the frame is called the reed. And attached to the reed on the same piece of metal bent up is the trigger. This is what you're going to be plucking to vibrate the reed and produce the sound. Um, so what you want to do is you want to press the back of the frame here firmly against the front of your teeth, like so. And you want to leave enough space so that whenever the trigger comes down, it doesn't cut your lip here. So you want to be think about putting it a little bit more towards the middle of your mouth, right? And so you want to press firmly so that whenever you pluck, especially outward, um, the, the harp doesn't come off your teeth and come back or like, you know, start to like shift around because that's how you can chip a tooth. Um, so a good tester before you start plucking away um, is to just kind of bend the reed in between your teeth. See if it can pass. Um, and so... Once you feel good about that, go ahead and try giving it a pluck. Um, a good thing to do is maybe plant your thumb because you want to try and pluck as straight as possible, as parallel to the harp as possible. Because if you pluck with an angle, you'll start to hit the frame um, and that's no good. That's n no bueno. Um, so yeah, once you can produce a clear tone, you want to go ahead and try producing different vowel shapes. This will help you to get used to manipulating the sound um, with different shapes of your mouth. Um, 
So once you get comfortable with that, um, another thing to be practicing is your breathing rhythms. Um, so I like to use a metronome. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to, um, but you can just see like the breakdown. So I do a constant pluck. And then I will breathe with the pluck. And then you breathe twice as fast as the pluck. Then you breathe in triplet with the pluck. And then you breathe sixteenth notes to the pluck. Keep going. Um, uh, but the main purpose of this exercise is to start to break apart your breathing rhythms from your plucking rhythms so that you can start to make those independent. Um, it's a lot like drumming, like four limb part drumming, uh, but you've got all these different things that you can do with jaw harp that you start to combine and create different sounds with. Um, one of those things is with your tongue. Um, different places that you put your tongue or move your tongue can create different sounds. Um, so one of my favorite is the phaser sound that you've already heard in this video. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm moving my tongue along the roof of my mouth, like just barely skimming it, just not even really touching it, um, and then stopping right before the front of my teeth, like this. Um, and then uh, another classic move with the tongue. That's just going You want to be careful not to move the tip of your tongue too far or it will hit into the reed, um, which we'll talk about later as an actual technique. Um, another tongue technique is just putting the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth. So there I'm combining the tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth and overtones, um, which actually comes with uh, your chest and your throat and opening that up. And it's a closed glottis technique. So you're actually closing off your glottis, which is like the bridgeway from your esophagus to your nose canal here. Um, so you can still breathe with a closed glottis, um, but it does make it a lot harder to make the harmonics come out or the overtones. Um. Yeah. Um. And another technique that we talked about earlier but didn't really was whenever the reed slaps into the tongue. So what you're going to actually do is flatten your tongue so that whenever you pluck the reed it just slaps into it So that's kind of a quick overview of some of the techniques you'll want to start exploring and combining. Um, yeah.
and different exercises. Um, be sure to subscribe and comment if you want to uh, go over a specific technique. Um, yeah, I'll be uploading a more advanced technique tutorial soon, uh, so be sure to check that out. And yeah, boing on. Peace and love.